friends, neighbors, community members. I'm Julie Lucero, and I'm going to start this presentation by telling you a story. I'm a first generation college goer, and um, I grew up in a rural town. And for the life of me, I can't remember having a conversation with my parents about college. And somewhere along the line, um, I, after graduating high school, uh, I ended up in the service industry. And if you ever worked in the service industry, so working as a waitress or as a, I was working in a flower shop, it's really tough work. You get all kinds of people, you deal with all kinds of personalities, it's, it's tough work. So I decided that I was going to try community college because um, you know, there had to be something better out there, right? So I ended up going to community college and then eventually ended up at the university. So as I was at the university, I still didn't know what I was going to major in. Um, but I knew some people that were in biology, and I thought, well, biology is, you know, something that, you know, it's going to take me somewhere. So I majored in biology. I spent those five years, three years in a master's program, and then five years in a PhD program, really figuring out what it is that I wanted to do. Now, my story may have at one point been unique but it's not unique anymore. We have students that are first generation coming to our universities and they don't really know what they're gonna do. They might have a good idea of what they're gonna do. They may have gone to uh, a medical seminar you know, to, to learn more about medicine. They might have learned more about nursing because medicine and nursing do a really good job of letting people know that they're there. But the, 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 <laughs> the professions in the College of Health there aren't necessarily the front and center. These are things that folks learn along the way. And so we are in a really good position to make sure that students know about us. Now, very, uh, at least initially when education research began, we really focused on cultural capital. And cultural capital was when individuals that had somebody that had gone to college could sort of help navigate through. But now, Yasso took that and she expanded it by saying, you know, we really need to make sure that we focus on developing community cultural wealth for students from all backgrounds. So that we're really looking at what are their aspirations, we're making sure that their family and their background is also included in what it is that we teach within the, the curriculum of our, of our professions. We need to focus on social capital, so the networking, so that students understand uh, the navigation, they have somebody to help navigate them through the university process. Uh, we also want to talk about resistant capital, or at least provide strategies for resistance capital, so that students from backgrounds that haven't always been front and center, that are suffering from health, diver from health diversity, I'm sorry, health disparities, good Lord, um, know what is going on with that. And then also the linguistic capital, so those whose first language is not English, we also realize that that bilingualism um, has benefits. And also the language that is within our professions, we also teach students so that they know the language to use when they get there. So the College of Health really is, once again, in a very unique position to create opportunities for students that look at the, the whole student, that educate for the entire student. So building this community cultural wealth. Now, a problem that we're having within universities across the United States is that trust in higher education is going down. So this is a Gallup poll between 2015 and 2018. We've seen a decrease of almost 10% in public trust in higher education. And so that might not seem like a lot, but when you start thinking about in low enrollment for universities across the country, we really need to start thinking about what do we need to do to build trust within academic institutions. Now, 41%, according to Morning Call and Soul, and this was a national survey, 41% uh, of Gen Zers who are 11 years old to 26 years old. So these are the students that are in our classrooms and the ones that are coming, going to be coming through our classrooms. 41% of them do not have trust in public institutions. Now this should really worry us. Um, and then 29% of first generation graduates do not have trust in public institutions. So this is really um, problematic, the generate first generation graduates. Because the way, one way that we can build trust is for, by word of mouth, right? We know that word of mouth really helps to build trust. So if 29% of first generation graduates are saying it's not worth it, we need to be worrying about that. And then 
32% of first-generation students, so those that are first-generation currently in, in university, 32% do not trust public institutions. Once again, word of mouth. These are the ones that potentially could be dropping out of our institutions. And so we need to make it so that they understand the value, the return on investment that they're going to be getting from their higher education um, degree. So what are we doing about it? So um, we had a course that was last taught in 2018. It was an introduction to health professions, but it was a junior level class. So we have taken that class, introduction to the health professions, and we have made it a 1,000 level class. So this is freshman level. And what we're planning to do here is build on that aspirational capital, right? So what students want to do, even if they don't know exactly what in health they want to do, we can teach them. We can provide all kinds of professionals to come into the classroom to talk to them about what it is that they are doing. But we're going to develop this network. So they're developing social capital. And then through that, they're also, they're also building navigational capital. So we're going to have current professionals. We're going to show them about online, um, we're gonna tell them about the on-campus resources. So one thing um, from my story is I never in high school knew what an advisor did. I never interacted with an advisor. And a lot of students are doing that. So then when they get to, to college university or to university, to the campus, they don't know what an academic advisor does at the university level. So we're gonna show them and we're gonna have advisors come in, talk to them about you know, how they can use their resources um, and other resources that are on campus. And then we're also going to require that students come and talk with me and my co-instructor, Ella Risa Hui. Um, and we have one-on-one -on -one interaction so that we know who the students are and we can put them, take them in the right direction. The other thing about this class is that we really want to fo follow the social ecologic model. So today you have heard a lot about the things that happen upstream that contribute to health. And so that we can organize using the social ecologic model. And so we can look at the theory, but then as students go and they interact with these professionals and they um, go in, they shadow, then they can really learn what happens in practice. So we're bridging that theory and practice gap. So this is an engagement opportunity. So we, um, on campus, we have a really great network of um, professionals that are on campus. But that's only one type of organization. And we know that different organizations offer different lifestyles for their professions. So we want um, individuals from outside of the university to come and talk to our students um, in the classroom. And so we need a diversity of experience. We need professionals from different environments. So the Veterans Administration, Indian Health Service, private practice, public practice, federally qualified health um, facilities. We want to know, um, we want diverse experiences in, in education. So maybe some are um, got a, a dance degree and now they're medical doctors, right? So we want that diversity of experience because um, not everybody has a direct path. And actually that is rare these days. Mostly we're muddling through. Not as bad as I did, but we're still muddling through. Um, the lifestyle. So what type of lifestyle do professionals, a variety of professionals have now? Um, because the students in our classrooms right now are really concerned with lifestyle. They want to make sure that they have a life and that they're not constantly working. And we also want a diversity of life story. So my story, um, as I mentioned, is not unique. Um, and there are others like me that students will enjoy hearing from because they, it's, it's, it's something that they are now experiencing. Um, and knowing that they can end up where they want to be um, given you know, where we started out. So I would love to have anybody um, who is interested contact us, me and Elarissa, I wish she was here, um, to come to our classrooms, come to our classroom and engage with our students um, so they can hear from a variety of people in a variety of backgrounds. Um, and we hope to grow this. This class is gonna be piloted in the fall of 2023. And we hope to grow it and create uh, maybe cohorts of students um, that go through this experience together so that they have you know, those, that, that social network, the navigational capital, and they actually meet the aspirations that they have for themselves. So thank you very much for your attention. I appreciate you all being here. And I will turn it back over to Dr. Ward.